This week on Sailing Gypsy, we're immersing ourselves in the wonders of a hidden place we stumbled upon on a beautiful French island before we batten down the hatches in where we hope we found shelter from an approaching storm. After the storm passes, we're embarking on a 42-hour downwind sail. Welcome back to Corsica. We've just made a pit stop this morning for a quick dip. It's not really a marked anchorage or anything, but we found some sand in about 30 feet of water. We jumped right in for a dip. We're the only boat here. It's pretty open, as you can see. There's an anchorage in there with some day boats, but you know us, we like being on our own. Travis is already actually on shore over there somewhere. And it doesn't look like much, but we swam in and it was really cool. So I had to swim back get our cameras because we thought we were just going in for a quick dip until we saw how pretty it looks in there and we've got to show you. So I'm going to hop back into the water, swim us over there and show you what I'm talking about. One of the best aspects of this lifestyle is the discovery and the adventure. Finding hidden gems like this one is the kind of stuff we live for out here. Basking in secluded, rugged beauty where worries melt away and our focus is solely on the nature that surrounds us. We've got our own private little swimming area here, a little beachfront. Super sticky today, so it's just a really nice spot to go for a dip, cool off, de-stick, and just take in where we are. But of course, not every day is as tranquil and relaxing as this. The weather changes quickly from one forecast to the next, and we've been keeping an eye out for some strong winds that will be approaching in the coming days. We're soaking in every minute of the calm before the storm, enjoying the stunning Corsican anchorages, knowing that we'll have to be on high alert more so than we normally already are, preparing for the sleepless nights that normally pair with inclement weather. And a mistral, for those of you who don't know, are these strong winds that come blowing from the northwest, like off of France. We're supposed to be getting around 30 knots in the anchorage. So we've actually gone around the corner to the first anchorage that we arrived at when we got to Corsica, because what appealed to us was that the shoreline here is really long and open. We never want to be crammed with a whole bunch of other boats when there's heavy winds because boats can go dragging into each other. And at least here with this long stretch, if someone were to drag off, you're going out to the openness. The other thing that really appealed to us was this big cliff that's behind me. We're on the lee shore right now, but it's because the winds are supposed to switch. And then when the storm comes in, we're going to be bow in to the beach here. And the idea is we want some protection from this cliff. We read it was a good spot for mistrals. We actually had what I think is a local gentleman come up to us and ask us if we were staying here for a few days. And we said, yep. And he said, oh, okay, good. It's a good spot. And if you need me, I'll be on VHF 16. And he was going around to all of the boats and stuff, just telling them that. I guess trying to like form a little community, you know, of all of us hiding away from the mistral, which is really nice. So Travis is actually just taking this opportunity to saw off a crusty portion of our chain. We have this plague of rust that's in our anchor locker now and it's so annoying because it drips down the side of our hull. Every time we use rust off to take it off, it just comes back instantaneously because of how bad the rust is in there from the chain. So we bought one of these little chain links that we had mentioned we picked up at the boat store in La Maddalena in Sardinia. It's getting windy. How are you making it out? <laughs> How are you making it out here? You know, wishing and hoping that what I'm doing makes sense. Look at this, watch this. See that rust there? It just smashes off. Yeah, it disintegrates. So I took off the bad section, so I think that's about 150 feet right here. At and then the we, 150 feet mark, you mean? You're yeah, not taking away 150 feet of chain. That would be like. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's at the 150 foot mark. And then I took off um, the other hundred and something because now we only have 50 feet left. So we're only going to have like 200 feet of chain. So I probably took out 100 feet of chain. Well, good thing we're only in 12 feet of water right now. Yeah. And 
As more boats made their way to seek protection from what was coming, Travis finished cutting off the weaker section of our chain and installing the linkage. We feel better about letting out more chain if we need to, knowing that that section is no longer there. Two more boats coming in. Yeah. Everyone gets out on deck and watches the new the new people come in. Where are they going? Where are they going? This guy just ran over to that guy and the cat. The reason why everyone's ears perk up is because those that have been here have gotten a feel for the way everyone has situated and moved. And when there's a wind switch, we've already kind of established where everyone's anchor is. You can tell they're, they're, they're talking to each other over there. <laughs> the wind direction started to switch, but late arrivals continued making their way into the bay. We put our anchor ball out to let others know where our anchor is situated and to give an indication of the amount of scope or chain that we have out and our potential swing radius. Come the morning, the Mistral arrived and we are no longer on a lee shore, with our bow facing the cliff that was behind us last night. So I feel like we made a right choice. We're definitely getting a wind shadow from this hill here in front of us. I wish we were snugged up a little bit tighter, but we obviously couldn't do that because of yesterday when we were on a lee shore, but it switched. And yeah, you can tell, maybe half a mile behind us, it's blowing. With 30 plus knots funneling into the bay, there's no better way for us to get peace of mind than to get eyes on our anchor. It's dug in well into the sand with no nearby potential obstructions. Unlike our neighbor, a catamaran to our starboard side, you can see that his anchor is not properly set. And within two minutes of this being filmed, he dragged and we saw him drift back quickly. Thank God he wasn't in front of us. Oh, he might have caught. The captain came out moments later and re-anchored himself close to shore and in sand. So you can tell, a rainbow. Just right out here by the rainbow, you can see it's calmer and then it picks up just past this buoy over here. Quite a lot, so pretty happy with this spot. We spent four days waiting out the high winds until we had a window to head out. All right, goodbye Corsica. We couldn't stand that place, we just had to leave. No, I'm just kidding. Corsica was unreal. We really liked uh, where we seen. I think we liked Corsica a little bit better than Sardinia, just for the time we were there. Obviously, we didn't get to see a lot um, of each island, but we've seen enough and we really liked Corsica. It was really pretty. But now we've decided to leave. We had some really good winds, anywhere from 12 to 20 knots for the next 40, 42 to 48 hours, and that's exactly what we need for where we're heading. We're wing on wing right now, and I think most of the trip will be wing on wing. We move quick, because both sails are totally catching a lot of wind, but that only means I can't sleep very well because I'm always worried about, you know, accidentally jiving with wing on wings, a little nerve wracking, but we will be fine. Conditions are pretty good. Maybe, I don't know, two to three foot, a uh, little sea state here and 15 to 20 knots of wind. Yeah, life's good. Steph's just uh, going to make some food and then it's her watch first, because we're kind of coming into the sunset right now, we're coming into evening, so she's gonna go to bed at eight, and up at, I don't know, maybe two. We'll switch shifts then. It's about five in the morning now. And it's still wind on wind, not on breeze. But the winds are starting to die a little bit. And apparently when I was down and he was watching, winds did pick up to like 30 knots. I didn't feel it, so I must have had a good sleep.
We caught this guy on the deck. <laughs> oh, my. That's edible. Okay. You can eat that, it's still fresh. She doesn't want them. Should I put it on the lure or what? does it again folks she goes and makes some delicious treats to fat me up <laughs> there's a big system south from us that's causing all this swell to come up and it's hitting us from the beam but the wind is downwind so we're just sloshing all over the rest of our the rest of our passage was pretty relaxed, minus the sea state growing a little bit. If you enjoy those natural sounds of sailing, we hope you enjoy the next three minutes. We covered 240 nautical miles in 42 hours, and now we're arriving in Menorca, Spain, an island that we only briefly stopped at without going ashore earlier this season. So we're pretty excited to explore on land and around the coast a little more. We'll be doing just that in next week's episode, so make sure you've hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next Friday.